In this notebook, I'm going to review uh, an exploration of a time series data set that I recently did. I started out with about 6,000 CSVs, so I needed this analysis to scale out. In this case, I'm only going to be looking at the first three CSVs to show the initial exploration, but the, the actual data set was much larger. I'm going to be using pandas to load the data in and then matplotlib to visualize the data. I always start, even when the data is really big, I just start at one file and can I get a feel for what that file looks like. So this is the standard approach uh, that I'll take even when the data set's very large. The file itself is not that large because uh, there's 93 rows and five columns. That's because I've already cleaned the sensitive data out of this data set and I've left in only the relevant parts. So you're not exposed to the uh, many columns that previously existed but for our case in this exploration, they're not relevant. If we looked at what's in the CSV, there's basically a case name and then a start time and an end time for each row. And that row then has some other data in it. And then the next row is the next slice of time. So think of this as the beginning and ending of the time slice for that given row. And this continues all the way through the data set. So there's 93 rows, and it goes down uh, here for a, a long amount of time, 26,000 seconds. One of the observations about this data sort of as a sanity check is that um, the during or closest to column should be one only once. And that turns out to be true because all the other values are zero. That was sort of a sanity check. Another sanity check that I have to know about this data is that the time stamps in the begin column and the time stamps in the end column should all be unique because they're sequential times. And so we see that there are 93 rows, there are 93 unique entries for time begin and 93 unique entries for time end. For the during or closest to column, there's only two values, zero or one. So those are some sanity checks before we sort of visualize the data. When I go to visualize the data, uh, because the begin column is in seconds, we can just watch it linearly increase. So for the duration of about seven hours or eight hours, there's uh, 93 timestamps and they're all sequentially ordered. So that gives us some confidence up in our original data set that these really are uh, increasing in time monotonically. The next thing that I thought of to do with this time series data, since we have the beginning and end times, is to look at what are the differences, what are the sizes of each row's time bin. And here's where we see our first anomaly. So that the difference between begin and end, uh, so this would be in minutes. So that big difference is almost always five minutes, except for one uh, row where it's less than uh, five minutes. So that's very visually obvious, very easy for us to pick out. So when we see this outlier, then we have to sort of ask uh, what what is going on there, right? And uh, the difference in seconds is not five minutes, but there's nothing sort of that stands out for us. And so let's look at the rows around it. So this is our outlier row here is 20 seconds short of five minutes, but the rows adjacent to it seem fine. So there's nothing uh, unusual there. The other thing that we see is that in the row above or previous to the row where there's a unusual width, uh, it's, it's, a, it's contiguous. So this start and that stop, uh, is one bin, and then the next bin that starts is at the same as the end of that previous one. So they are contiguous, just as the ro the row that has the anomaly is also contiguous. So that means we haven't actually, even though we're a shorter bin for some reason, uh, we still have uh, coverage in the in the rows. So we can ask that sort of more generically: Are all the bins contiguous, or are there gaps? 
Um, and so the way that we do that is we look at all of the begin times and all of the end times. And if you notice, the, the pattern that we're seeing here is that this time and that time, they're in adjacent rows and they're of equal value, which indicates they're contiguous. And this one and that one are also uh, the same value and they are contiguous. So as a quick check, not, not exhaustive, but the fact that we should expect there to be these two values show up in both. So we can do the, uh, how many times, which, which times more specifically, are only showing up once. And it turns out if we do that, that intersection, uh, we do the union of all the values and then we say uh, which ones are only in one set, that list is exactly the last time and the very first time stamp. So again, let's look at the, the head and tail that we previously had. This value only shows up once. All other values are paired except for the very last one that doesn't have a pair. So those two values are the only ones that show up once. So that's like a, a quick check that our, our, our bins are contiguous. All right, so here I just did all that same analysis for uh, other CSV files. And then the conclusion is, huh, another CSV file, another outlier. And it's the same uh, amount of time as far as being an outlier. So it's 280 seconds instead of the expected 300 seconds. So now we have two files, and then we can sort of like visually compare, but those aren't in the same row index, so they're not occurring at the same time. But separate CSV, there is an outlier. All right, and then just you know for to see if those two really are unusual, let's look at a third one. Well, the third one I pick happens to have also an outlier. And this time, the outlier is in the opposite direction. So 320 seconds rather than 300. OK, so now we see there's something really going on. And at this point, I would say stop doing the technical data analysis and start talking to the people who produced the data. There's some other story going on here. We see one outlier in every CSV we've looked at so far. It's always 20 seconds. The outlier is either 20 seconds high or 20 seconds low than the expected five minute bins. So I would say this now becomes a human problem to diagnose where is this anomaly coming from.